Hi guys, this is Mike. In this video, I want to talk a little bit more about MoGraph cloners in Cinema 4D. So in the last video, I was kind of going over some basics, but here we want to do a little bit of a deeper dive. You can see in this scene, I have a few different objects that I've already have cloned out. And you can see in my layer manager or my objects manager, you can see all the various different clones. And so if you come over here to the attributes manager with our cloner one selected, you can see that we have a few options and I didn't really talk about this in the last video, but you can see that when you add it in a clone, it gives it a color. Now in the, for the default, it's going to be white. We can choose a different color if we come over here to this color bar. And this is something that we can use within Cinema 4D. We can go through it depending, it does not just cloners, but any other option within Cinema 4D that uses a color. We have this a few different options that we can use. We can use RGB, you can use Kelvin for uh, warmth, say for light. And we have a few different other options, hexadecimal. Um, we have our uh, color wheel, and we can also choose a uh, color from an image. So I just wanna let you know that we do have these options here in order to make, um, you know, so it's a little bit easier for us to uh, sort of make these colors. <clears throat> as well as, you know, if you wanna add in colors, you can add it into your swatch as well. Actually, we have a whole tutorial and video over this color system. But what we can then do is if we go to um, any of our sections here, we can add in a color. And this is uh, outside of the materials within Cinema 4D. So you can add in these colors and just kind of give it some, um, a uh, just differentiation between each of the, each of the clones, or excuse me, each of the cloners. And then when you want to, you can put it on a material. So if I go to Command R, you can see that it's going to render within your viewport and it's gonna, you're gonna see that color. So um, one other thing is if I'm going to, um, if I'm going to the various different uh, displays, you can also see that as well up here. As, and you can do the index, you can do the weight, um, or you can just have none as for default. So it's something I didn't really go over and I just wanted to kind of just touch on that a little bit. Also, I didn't talk about fixed clone. So you'll notice that if you have your object and you try to move this around, you notice it's not moving your all the clones. So when this is, and let me undo, if you go back to your cloner, you can choose fix clone, and then you can move those clones around as well as rotate and, um, and change the size as well. So I just wanna also, keep that point out, uh, point that out as well. Uh, we should keep it uh, fixed. So I have that checked. Now we'll look at per step. We have, as you add in clones, and let me zoom out a little bit, you can kind of see as you're adding in clones, it just keeps going upward and upward. But let me go back down to 10. If I go to um, end point, and then adding clones, that's going to fill in at this endpoint of your clone. So that's determined by your uh, position that you have here for the X, Y, and Z. So as I'm adding clones, it's filling in, but it's not adding in any more on top of that. So, and you can do this for any of the other sides as well, X, Y, and Z. Now, down here, you can see that we have a few different options for rotation. Now, if I'm going to, let me try another uh, set. Let me go to this cloner set here. If I'm doing a rotation, you can see that, uh, say, in the pitch, this will rotate and go all the way around. And let me um, hide our one cloner just so we can see this a little bit better. If I'm uh, rotating this, say in the bank, um, you can see that this can rotate all the way around. Now, 
when I add in a few different rotations, you can see that we start getting some pretty interesting uh, shapes as we start uh, adjusting this, this um, these rotations, whether it be for the heading, pitch, or the bank. Now, then you can start adjusting some of our count, and we can do this at endpoint or per step is totally fine. And we can zoom this out, and we can also stretch this out as well. So let me bring this back down a little bit. And you can see that now that we have quite a few to work with, you can make these very interesting shapes as well as animation. You also have these uh, points here that you can add in uh, into your timeline so that you, then you can start making some very interesting shapes and animations very quickly and not needing to, um, you know, we, you don't have to do a whole lot to it just yet. And keep in mind, and I'm just kind of adjusting here with the values, and we can bring this X down a little bit more. We got this pretty high. But what you can also do, and we can bring this down to maybe, say, 450. And as you're rotating this around, Especially when you have all these different, all these different uh, clones that you have set up in here, we can increase this as much as we want or as little as we want. But you can also include in and change the shape as well and rotation. So you get these very interesting kind of looks that you wouldn't really get too much on just by default. So very quickly you can come up with some pretty interesting ideas just by playing around with these values. Okay, so moving on to our third cloner set, what I do wanna show you is a little bit more with the effectors. Now if I go to say, um, MoGraph, Effector, and then Random, and I go to my fall off, we'll go to say Box, and let me move this into position. You can see that we can start affecting uh, these random, uh, randomly using this uh, random effector. But you can also add in various different um, other shapes on top of our fields. So you're not just limited to just one like just say the box, you can also add in another one on top of this. And you can have these blend modes as well, just like you would have like the color in terms of layers, you can do the same thing with this hierarchy within fields. So the fall off is, has radically changed and I think it's for the better. You can do a lot of different things with, uh, with this kind of layering system. It just adds in so much more um, so many different things that you can add into this, it makes it a really more enjoyable kind of experience. So I'm going to be going over a little bit more of these effectors individually because something like this is really going to help you as you kind of go through and just kind of getting an understanding. And I don't want you to get overwhelmed with all of these different kind of uh, parameters and different layers that we have here within uh, the effector list. But as you kind of start going through it, we'll go, go over some of the basics and then we'll start getting a little bit more in detail and in depth. So what I wanna do in the next video is really start getting into the object and then we'll start getting into some of these different lists here that we didn't really get through that much. So we're gonna go through linear and, and radial and grid array and honeycomb array um, in individual videos, so just so we can really get a, a very good, clear understanding of each one and some of their limitations and what they can be used for.